Anybody ready for the word this morning? Hey man, listen, hey, if you're a first time guest to, guest to Transformation Church, we want to say welcome. We love you. We've prayed for you to be here. We, we honestly don't care how you got here. Like if somebody bribed you and was like, yeah, I'm going to take you to lunch, but we got to go to church for us. Good friend. Uh, we, we really hope that you would get here and that God would align your life. And I don't care what you did yesterday. I don't care what you smell like right now. See, a lot of churches want you to clean up on the outside before something happens on the inside. And at Transformation Church, you can belong before you behave. Now, I know that messes with some people's theology and they messed up. But you can't clean a fish you ain't caught. And, and, and I, I would rather be like Jesus than talk about him. Because he always was with the people that nobody wanted to be with. He was hanging out at tax collector's house. He was hanging out at the prostitute's house. They would have they been like, Bing. oh, Jesus, going to get. But maybe he was after their soul. Today, at this church, all we want to do is represent God to you. And I don't care if you're lost or found. There's one thing that we really care about, and that's that you would be transformed in Christ. So today, I hope you just take a step further in your journey of faith. You don't have to become some brand new person all today. We hope you do. But if it takes you 10 years and everybody else is taking big steps, but you just scoot. And next week you come back and you scoot again. And the week after that, you scoot again. And it's been a year. And you... All I came to tell you is God sees your progression and he loves that more than perfection. Look at your neighbor and say, keep scooting. <laughs> I love you. Well, today we are going to start part 11 of a series that we're calling, help me, crazy faith. Okay, I got a, I got a, I got a challenge for somebody. Who thinks that they can name eight out of the 10 message titles that we've done so far in this series? Now, I saw a hand go up and then come down. Who, who do you think? You got it? You got it? Okay, come on. Bring, bring the mic to him right here. Come right here. Y'all give it up. Tell me your name, boss man. Tell me your name. Lucas. Say it again. Lucas. Lucas, don't, don't hold the mic, Lucas. Okay, he okay. gonna hold the mic, okay? All right, I got you. All right, Lucas, you gotta get eight out of 10. And then and hand, me that, hand me that hoodie, what I wanna give him. I'm gonna give oh, you man. this new represent okay. hoodie if you can name okay. eight out of the 10. Okay. Do y'all think that Lucas got it? They with you. Let's okay. go, Lucas. So week one, we got crazy faith. Crazy faith. Then we got maybe faith. Then maybe faith. We got Pastor Jeremy with hazy faith. Hazy faith. We got lazy faith. We, one. Lazy and faith. Two. That don't count for two. Okay. Um. So crazy baby. Baby faith. Um. Wavy faith. Wavy faith. Um. Come on, come on, come on. But crazy baby maybe. Lazy, hazy, um, I'm trying so hard right now. Woo! Um. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, stop, 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 we got crazy faith, which is when we got this building. Mm -hmm. We got baby faith. We got maybe faith. Daily faith. Daily faith. Daily faith. There's another one. That was Pastor That's, seven. That's six. You got two more. And we had hazy faith with Pastor Jeremy. Uh -huh. FOMO. FOMO. Okay, we got one more. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Last one. Here we go. You got it. Yo, I got it. You got it. You got one of y'all better get it. Hey, um. <laughs> Last one. Trading faith. Trading faith. There we go. Now, there's only one hoodie. <laughs> Let's give it up for, for my guys right now. <laughs> he was like, you got it or do you got it? He was like, I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm so excited that we have fun in church. And, and uh, I believe that church should be enjoyed and not endured. And um, we're going to take this thing one step further today. And um, I, I'm excited because this message series has literally been reverberating around not our city, not our state, not even our country, 
but it's been revolving and reverberating around the, everybody say the world. They, they told me, the team came to me and said over 4 million people have watched a message from Crazy Faith in the past 10 weeks. Y'all can give, they've been impacted by that. Now, the people who are like, oh, they're just all about numbers. The thing that God tells us in his word is to go into all the world and make what? Disciples. Teaching them. And this is a way that God is allowing us to go into all the world and teach. And I just thank God for every person in the room, everybody who's sharing and liking, everybody who's inviting friends. This is what transformation looks like. And I believe we're just getting started. Amen? Well, I, I want to tell you a story because a lot of people come to me and like, Pastor Mike, how do you get sermon messages? You know what I'm saying? You 10 weeks into this series and you said we're going to be crazy till Christmas. And there's not that many AZ words in the dictionary. And um, I I'm going to let you into how I get messages. Um, my mother in love, LaDana, um, she's sitting right here on the front row. I love you, girl. Um, this is my wife's mom. We have a great relationship. Since the time I was about 15, she just brought me in, loved on me. And um, because we have a great relationship, she randomly calls me, texts me, and come over the house to talk about random stuff. And um, one day I'm sitting at my kitchen table and I hear this frantic knock on the door, like boom, 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 boom. And I was like, mom, what's up? She said, Michael, oh God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm like, mom, calm down. Tell me what's happening. And she hyperventilated and she pulls out this letter. And she says, Michael, I think God didn't answer my prayers. I think God didn't. Read it. So I read this letter and it says, Miss LaDanna Miller, you've just been awarded $100,000. Yeah. Sit down. This ain't a miracle. <laughs> I love our church because if you heard, she said, hey. I, I, I. <laughs> Let me just warn you, this ain't a miracle. Uh, <laughs> save your energy. Uh, this... She said, you've won $100,000. She said, Michael, I've been praying and God done that. I said, mom, keep reading. <laughs> and it said, if you send us $700, we'll release your $100,000. She said, do you, do you think this is real? I said, mom, anybody who has $100,000 to give you ain't and don't need your 700. And her little, you just saw like somebody popped her balloon and she just deflated. And I said, mom, that's Fugazi. And she said, Fu who? I said, Fugazi. And she said, what does that mean? I said, it's fake. I said, I said, this is not real. It's counterfeit. It's Fugazi. And as this happened to me, my little mind said, bing. And I said, maybe this would be a good topic to talk about in this sermon series because there's too many people walking around saying they have faith but their faith is fugazi uh-huh they got fake faith and so today I just want you to ask your neighbor as we expand our vocabulary today is your faith fugazi come on ask at least three people is your faith fugazi I see you in the back Trisha the English teacher is like, Fugazi, it's not a word. I do not believe, Trisha, we're leaving. Okay, here. It is a made up word and it is in popular culture right now, but it does have a, a definition that I think we can work with um, in this series. Fugazi actually means fake, knock off, or false. And, and how many of us talk like we have faith, act like we have faith, Get it tattooed on our body, wear a shirt, post a scripture. But our faith is knockoff. <laughs> Not real. Faith, let me help, help you. This chain that I'm wearing, Fugazi. <laughs> Don't laugh at me because the purse you walked in here with, Fugazi. <laughs> Some of y'all hair. Oh, let me stop. <laughs> She 
say, you can tell? Yes. <laughs> I watched this Netflix documentary the other day called Fire Festival. And, and it, it was this documentary about the greatest festival party that, that was ever going to happen. And they had celebrities around it and they sold these pictures of how it was going to look. And thousands of people flew to this private island and it looked nothing like what was advertised. These are some pictures of Fire Festival. They advertised that there were going to be stuffed lobster dinners and that's the actual dinner. They advertised that it was going to look like that behind everybody's house and that's what it actually looked like. They advertised that everybody was going to have bungalows on the beach and it looked more like a concentration camp. It was fugazi. It was fake. It had no legitimacy. And my question is, are you claiming a faith that when people cut it open and look at your life, they say they talk about going to church, but I see how he talks to his wife. They talk about being generous, but I see how they didn't even give that little kid a ride that's on the same team as their son because it was income. I see it, but their faith looks, everybody say fugazi. Uh-huh. It's fake. It's kind of like all of these Instagrams that keep popping up every week that claim to be me. I am the real Michael Todd. And they're asking people for money. Let me help you. If I needed money from you, I'd come to you and ask you. <laughs> if you're getting hit up on Instagram, please know that every day, every day, don't send no money to whoever this is. Everybody say Fugazi. And, and it's affected so many other people in business, in lifestyle, when a company tells you to invest in something and they're selling you a product, kind of like Enron did, and, and people lost hundreds of millions of dollars because they put stock into something that was fugazi. My question is, at the end of our Christian life, after all the church services you've been in, after all the worship songs that you've sung, after all the things that you have done in the name of God, will you get to the pearly gates and God say, that was fake? Like you acted like you knew me. You, you, you acted like I was the head of your life. You, you, you acted like your first response was prayer. But when I roll back the, the, the play or the film of your life, I just keep seeing a lot of actions that were empty. And the saddest thing for us as a church, everybody in the room and everybody watching online, is that we would go through 16 to 18 weeks of a series. And at the end of it, our faith be plastic. Today, I want to show you how to make your faith real, alive, vibrant, moving, and infectious. See, the type of faith that I'm talking about is you can't get too close to me because it might jump off on you. See, the faith that I'm talking about, what I'm believing for, you get around me, it'll make you start believing for some stuff that you, oh, y'all don't hear me. Where are the people in this room that have the type of faith that will make other people say, you know what? I need to believe God more. I need those people to give God a shout of praise real quick. So, so, so I, I want us to walk through this and, and, and I don't want you to understand because some of y'all are offended right now because some of you are like, Pastor Mike, how do you have the authority to diagnose the state of my faith? Okay, J just stay with me to the end of this service. Let me give you my first point. Fugazi faith has no owner. See, see, fake faith is, is the type of faith that does not have an owner. Explain that to me, Pastor Mike. Well, I think what happens is most of us confuse faith and optimism. That we start thinking things like this. Somehow it's going to work out. Things are looking up. Somehow the universe, the wind, the, 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 the elements are going to bring everything together and everything's going to work out. Optimism is not faith. 
because optimism has no owner. But when you have faith, you're putting your faith in an object and his name is Jesus. And the thing that you got to understand is that a lot of people get tricked because they think on the bright side, but they haven't put their faith that Jesus is going to be the one to change their situation. Jesus is going to be the one to turn everything around. I can prove it to you. I can look at Martha when her brother Lazarus died and they wanted Jesus to come and he waited four days to come and Lazarus is dead now. And Martha has an attitude. I think she was a sister because she walked right up to Jesus and said, Jesus. Watch her statement. If you would have been here, not if the universe would have showed up, not if something would have happened, that's just optimism. But if you, Jesus, would have been here, Lazarus wouldn't have died. But watch the most gangster statement in faith history. Lazarus is dead. She going off on Jesus because he's the who that her faith was attached to. And he didn't show up when she needed him to show up. But then look at this said. She said, even now, while the situation is dead and now you've shown up, I have faith not in the universe, not that something will work out, not in that things are looking up, but I have faith in Jesus that even now. Ah! Some of y'all, you're looking at situations that have been dead. You're looking at relationships that are on life support. And I came to tell you, if Jesus is here, you can get the faith to say, even now. But Martha wasn't optimistic. She wasn't looking on the bright side. Faith has to be assigned to a who can, that can change your situation. And there are too many of us in this room because we're not, we're not steeped in fear anymore. We think we have faith, but our faith is not working because we have been more optimistic than faith filled. Let me show you. I'm going to try to illustrate this. Put the faith continuum up there for me because I need people to see this right now. Like, like, like what happens is many people in this room, they, they started off with no faith. And, and when you don't have any faith, like, like what happens is you, you, you try to get and, and, and get encouraged enough to be able to start speaking faith. And, and let me help somebody because life and death is in the power of the what? That's Proverbs telling us that we should be speaking life. We should be speaking good. And most of us speak optimistic and not faith filled. Can I prove it to you? Optimism says, I think my sickness is going to get better. Faith talk assigns it to Jesus. By his stripes. See, there's a who in there. By Jesus Christ's stripes, I am what? Healed. Optimism says, my marriage should work. But faith talk says, what God? Who? God has put together, let no man separate. See, the thing is, because most of us can't delineate between optimism and true faith, we settle. And we speak words that aren't faith-filled, but they're hopeful with no who. Who's going to change your situation? Who's going to heal your situation? Who's going to deliver you from that addiction? Who's going to change your family around? See, when you put a demand on your daddy and you call him by name, <laughs> something happens to any father. Can I tell you a true story? My youngest daughter, Ava Ray Michelle Todd, is going through a season of not sleeping through the night. Pray for your pastor. And every night around 3, 4 a.m., no matter if I have to preach or not, she starts yelling a name. She doesn't say, whoever, whoever, she doesn't say random man. She doesn't say kid that I was playing with at the park. Do you know the name that she begins to call on? She says, daddy, daddy, daddy. And she's relentless. I have listened to that girl call my name for an hour straight. 
standing up in the crib with her eyes closed in complete darkness. Daddy, 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 daddy. But at the moment she hears the door crap open, her arms go up and she says, daddy. And some of you are in a position right now that is complete dark in your situation and you ain't been able to see. And it seems like you've been calling them all night. But I'm telling you, God's about to step into the room of your situation if you call on him. That's why I'm not optimistic. I'm faith-filled because my faith is the sign to daddy. Somebody give God a shout of praise in this building. So that's why you got to get your long language right. Don't just talk. I talk <clears throat> Ooh. Don't just talk optimistic. Talk. Everybody say faith filled. See, see, let me give you a couple more because this is going to help somebody. Optimism says I won't always be addicted to porn. There's light at the end of the tunnel somewhere. But faith talk says I'm pure. And I'm a new creation in Christ. That's the who. I'm hiding myself in the word of God. Optimism says I'll feel joy one day. Faith talk says the joy of the Lord is my strength today. There is a who attached to it. Somebody will be optimistic and say, well, I've got enough money to get by. What? That's not the way a king's kid should be talking. When my Bible tells me that our God owns the cattle on a thousand hills and you talking about I got enough money to get by, you need to change the optimism into faith talking. You need to say, my God, who? My God, who? My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. He ain't looking at my bacon hat count through Jesus who loves me and I will one day be the lender and not the borrower. Y'all don't even believe it in the room. If you're going to be faith-filled in this building, give God one more shout of praise. Yeah. Faith is rising. Faith is rising. See, whatever you do, you better believe in the who. I know I sound like Dr. Seuss up in here, Sam I am. But I'm trying to tell you, like, if you don't attach your belief to a who, it's fruitless. And I don't, want you to, I don't want you to get me misunderstood. Optimism is not bad. It's just not the goal. I'm not just trying to be optimistic. I want to see these things change in my life. And that means I have to have God a part of this thing. Let me show you on this faith continuum. If you put this up here, this is where most of us start. Most of us start not having any faith. The opposite of faith is fear. So we're usually in fear. We're usually not wanting to ask God for anything. We usually think, why bother? Like maybe God, if you had a little second of the time to you know, work on my situations. And my Bible says he's concerned about the details of our lives. And so maybe somebody sent you week one of the message and you saw crazy faith and we got the keys and your faith is starting to expand. And it goes from a place of fear and it raises up a little bit. And, and then you join a B group Shout out to the 2,213 people who joined the B group last week. Maybe you get in community. And, and, and y'all know how faith comes, right? Faith comes by hearing. And hearing what? The word. So you're around other people who aren't perfect but that are progressing. And your, weight, your, 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 your faith goes up just a little more. But this is the trick of the enemy. Is that we get to the place where we're not in fear and we're more optimistic, but we never take the journey to go past optimism and get fully into faith. And that's why I'm here. That's why I'm your pastor. To get you from just, oh God, wow, I mean, the universe is really just working things out for me. Oh no, 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 no. no. Cause the universe ain't dependable. The Bible says the grass withers and, and or the, what does it say? The, um, say? the flowers, 
Thank you, Pastor Charles. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God stands everlasting. And that's what I'm trying to get you to connect to. And so, so, so this is the thing I need everybody to understand. That for us to get from optimism to faith, there's something that goes in the middle of that that most people don't want to do. It's a cuss word. Write it down in your notes. Work. I think uh, Prophet Rihanna said it best. <laughs> work, 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 work. <laughs> um, and, and, and this is the thing because what we want to do is we want to expect God to do everything. But the truth is that God will do everything you can't do, but will not do anything you can do. They missed it. Because they sitting here mad like, God ain't worked. You ain't made a budget. <laughs> God won't do it. He said, you haven't apologized. He will not do for you what you have to do. But he'll do, everybody say everything that you can't do. And the problem is that Fugazi faith, write this down, won't work. And faith without works is dead. Dang it. So this is where I dare say 70 to 80% of Christians live their entire life at a place where I'm no longer in fear. I had enough faith to put my trust in Jesus, but not enough faith to live an abundant life. I had enough faith to get saved, but not enough faith to actually change. I had enough faith to join the church, but not enough faith to forgive other people who keep doing me wrong. It's going to take, everybody say work. Because faith without works is what? I think I found a picture of a lot of y'all's faith. It, it popped up on my phone. And, 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 and I, I was reading James chapter 2 verse 21. I want you to go there with me real quick. Look, look, look at this. And then I'm going to show you the picture of many of our faith. It says, don't you remember that our ancestor Abraham was shown to be right with God by his what? Ooh. That's the work we got to do? That's the things that we have to do? Our actions? It says when he offered his son Isaac on the altar, you see his faith and his actions worked together. His actions, ooh, this is my favorite. His actions made his faith complete. Most of you have had a missing link to your faith. It's been action. And you've been saying, God, why? I gave and it didn't work or I tried in this because you haven't been consistent in the action part of what you have been called to do. And God's saying, Abraham was not called a man of faith because he had a dream and he, and he heard from God. He was called a man of faith when he went to his son Isaac, which was the promised child, and said, boy, get up. Why, daddy, what are we doing? We're going to worship. And what the boy didn't know is that God told Abram to sacrifice your son. I gave him to you when you weren't even supposed to have him, so give him back to me now. Don't that sound like a lot of our careers? Don't that sound like a lot of our relationships? That you prayed and God did a miracle and gave you something and now he no longer owns it, you do. So when he asked for it back, you're like, no, man. And God said, are you really about to fight with me what you did, with what you didn't even deserve? That's why it's crazy when I hear people talking about they don't tithe and give 10% or give offering. You didn't even qualify for the job you got. And then God gave you a job making two times more than what you even deserve to make. And then he asked you for 10% back. If I do the math, you're making more than he is. And he just said, I want to do this not for my sake, but to rebuke the devourer for your sake. But cool, keep it. And then the enemy comes in to devour what God wanted to be increase and surplus for you. And Abraham picks up his son and he takes him to this mountain and he tells the people around, he had a servant, he said, hey, stay right here. Me and the boy are going up to do what? Worship. And, and this is what God says, there it is. There's the action. 
that moves with my faith. I bet God was in heaven like, he about to really do it. <laughs> Yo, Gabe, come here, Mike, come here. <laughs> I spoke to him last night. And I said, I want, I want Isaac back. And I didn't even think he was going to do it because they waited 25 years for this promise. And, you know, usually most of my children, when they wait so long to get something, and then I ask them to do something different with it, they forget about me and leave the faith and say it was all me. But look at you. He about to do it. He done left the servant and he called it worship. Oh, shoot. Let's see. Let's see. He put him on. He lifting up the knife. Gabe, go get him. Go get him. Go get him. He gonna kill his son. That's crazy. And out of the bush, God provided a sacrifice. He didn't want his son. He wanted Abraham's heart. And I'm trying to tell you that a lot of what God is asking you for has nothing to do with what he's asking you for. He really wants your heart. And that's how you know your faith is fake. Is when God asks you to do something or he asks you to say something or asks you to pay for that person behind you meal. And you're like, they got in the line, they had money. That had nothing to do with the money. It had everything to do with your heart. Uh, I'm talking to somebody. He said his actions made his faith, everybody say complete. Oh, I'm hoping that the missing link in your faith is actually having action with your faith. Yeah. Verse 23, and so it happened just as the scriptures say, Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He was even called a friend of God. You can get called a BFF with God when you walk in that level of faith. It said, see, oh, this is the powerful scripture. So you see, we are shown to be right with God by what we do, not by faith alone. So how you treat the waitress that didn't serve you well shows if you're actually right with God. <laughs> how you forgive your family members who jacked you over the last time they came in for holiday season and you thinking about telling them you dead for this holiday season. <laughs> That shows if you're really right with God. How you respond back to that nasty email they sent you? It's what you do. Not what you say. Not what you quote. It's what you, everybody say, it's my work. Woo. And if, if we don't become a church that puts corresponding action with the faith that we are talking about, when we walk out of here, our faith is incomplete. And the world doesn't need another broken system. Your boss is not looking for another broken system to take time away from him on his Sunday. But if we could present to him a complete faith that transformed you from the inside out and now makes you a light every dark place you walk into, they will... They will Ask like the people in the Bible said, what must I do to be saved? And we have to have complete faith. Somebody say complete faith. So look at verse 26. It says, just as the body is dead without breath, so also is faith dead without good works. What are you saying, Pastor Mike? Faith without works is what? Dead. And this is where, when I got to this place in my scripture reading, this image popped up on my phone and God just showed me something. Can you show them what and where a lot of their faith is right now? It's in a Christian coffin. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Michael, this is the true definition of the living dead. He said that they're alive in me through salvation, but their faith is dead. So they walk around and everything that I want to do after salvation is laying in a coffin. And he said, I want faith to be revived. What is a revival? It's what's on the inside of you coming alive again. 
And I'm just here to tell you that, that Crazy Faith is not just a cool sermon series title. It is the title of a movement that we are starting at this church. It's a movement that will make people that who, who have never believed before, they're going to believe for the first time. And it's a movement that will allow people whose faith has been dead and sitting in a Christian coffin, that thing is going to be like Lazarus and it's going to rise again. I'm telling you right now, you may not believe it, but mark my words and record the video that a revival is starting from this place right here that's about to touch the entire world and I'm just looking for about 2,000 people because if one can put a thousand to flight and two ten thousand what can two thousand people transformation nation make some noise people in this building make some noise if we're gonna have active faith there's people right now they're like I don't know how to feel about this is it does it take all that? <laughs> it takes all that and more. If we're really going to fulfill the Great Commission. It takes all that and more. If we're going to see the person that you think is hopeless actually come to Christ and be transformed. They don't got to be transformed here. They don't got to be changed at TC. But maybe what you get here and those nudgings from the Holy Spirit to send them an encouraging text message and to take them out to lunch and to give them a Christmas present when their whole family has forgotten about them. Maybe that's more of a work of Jesus, the hands and the feet, than anything you could do on a platform. Maybe what God is trying to do is make you the church instead of this the church. See, when I say, where's the church at? Most people think of this building. But somebody just touch yourself and say, I'm the church. God cares more about the organism than the organization. He said, if I could get a, just a bunch of organisms to be faith-filled, to not be in fear or just optimism, but believe what I say, we'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. I know y'all don't do church like that. But I'm talking about people who will speak those things that are not and those things actually start coming to bad. You're sitting in something that was impossible. But I spoke the thing out and we're sitting in faith. But how sad. If we have a faith as a big group, and you don't have faith for your home. How devastating. If you can watch people like the testimony of the person that we gave an offering who was, a, who was delivered from the addiction of something, and you can clap for that, but then go back to your addiction tomorrow and not believe that God could actually change you. Either we believe this or we don't. I'm not going to waste my whole life in something I actually don't believe. If you don't want to be a part of this army that God is rising up, you might want to find some other place to go. But as for me and my house, I said as for me and this house, we will stand flat footed on the word of God in faith and believe that God is good and he's still working in the affairs of his people. Give God some praise in this place. I will not have Fugazi faith. My faith won't be fake. It won't be fabricated. It won't be hollow. That may mean I'm going to have to study more. That may mean that I'm going to have to get in a small group. That may mean I have to go to prayer. That may mean I have to say I don't understand something. But I'm telling you, if we keep progressing as a church to the faith that God has called us to, eyes have not seen. And ears, I'm just talking faith talk right now. For everybody that wants three points in a poem, come back next week. But I'm talking to somebody's baby. And I'm trying to make it leap on the inside of you. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of man the things that God has already prepared. He's not making this up as he goes. We already have a preferred future prepared. But will you have the faith to believe it? And it's crazy, like as I look at the dynamics in the room, you have people whose eyes are twinkling like they're excited, like this can actually happen. 
And it's just crazy that in the same moment, there's people that when I'm talking, you feel more defeated. You, you, and I want to be sensitive to that right now because I don't want to just hype the hype people. I want to love on the lowly because that's what God wants. He, he said, okay, everybody, but I'll leave the 99 for the one. And so I just want to talk to somebody in here who, who when I'm talking faith like that, it's making you feel more desperate. When I'm talking faith like that, it's feeling you, like you're more in despair. Well, if God is so good, why am I in this situation? And the thing that you got to understand is how faith works. See, because faith without works is dead. So how does, how does faith work? Point number three, faith works by love. See, most people don't connect this, but in Galatians 5, 6, it tells us that faith worketh by love. It's the gasoline to your faith. And this is why many people don't really have faith is because you don't have love. I mean your business now. Because you thought it could just be you and God. But he puts us on this earth to be annoyed. I mean surrounded <laughs> by people who you're going to need his help to love. Oh, God. Do y'all really want to know how this faith thing works? Faith without works is dead, but the only way that faith works is by love. Let me prove it to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It says, you know what? You could speak in the language of the earth, all of the languages, Spanish, Italian. Uh, I don't know no more languages. What are some other languages? Okay, you got them, French, okay. He said, you can speak in all of those languages and then even be upgraded to the language of angels. I don't even know what that sounds like. But if you didn't love others, it would only be like a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. Hey, I just prayed for three hours. That's all God heard. Father, I've been served. When you walk into your job with your cross on and your Bible, but you don't love the people that are at the cooler. When you stand up and say, I'm honoring God who's the head of my life. God says, I'd rather you love them and be ignorant than have all the language in the world and not love them. Because all I hear, but it's time for a church that will begin to love people where they're at with their messed up selves in their broken. This is how faith works. Faith works by love. And then he goes on. He says, if I have the gift of prophecy, you can see the future. You can know what happens before it happens. He said, and if you understood all God's secrets, plans, and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains, literally you could walk up to the Rocky Mountains and say, move over. You could go to the Himalayas. I want you to think about this. You have so much faith. You're like, Himalayas, up, over, down. He said, if you could do that in real life, <laughs> but you didn't love others, it would be nothing. I... I really feel like it is my duty to, to not sell you on an idea and give you the results of faith when you're not ready for the responsibility of faith. See, the responsibility of faith is you're going to have to love people who you don't want to love. You're, you're going to have to go back to God and say, God, I want to cuss them out and slap them and snatch their wig off. Because you know it's a wig. But today, Father, I'm asking you to give me that 1 Corinthians 13 type of love. That's patient, kind, long-suffering, 
doesn't keep record of wrong. And so this is why many of our faith is not working because faith works by what? Love. And your, your faith without corresponding action of loving people, the Bible calls it nothing. So all of your accolades without loving your kids, not providing for them, because that's what you thought loving them was. Not taking them to Disney World, because that's what you thought loving them was. Nurturing, being there. I'm talking to the men in the building. Well, I'm just not affectionate. You better shut up and learn how to get up in God's lap and tell him, Daddy, I'm sorry. I need you. I don't know how to run this family on my own. I'm making a whole bunch of money, but I feel empty inside. You better get to the Father so that he can teach you how to be a father to your children. I don't know where we got this notion that men have to be this. Th those are all attributes. That's perversion because those are exact opposite um, characteristics of our heavenly father. Do you take your kids on a walk? Because God took Adam on a walk in the cool of the day. Uh, Y'all, I can't even get off into that. We might have to do a parenting series. I'm not claiming to do it right, but we have the best father in the world. He's called a good, good father. And... And so what ends up happening here, I got eight minutes, don't start playing. <laughs> I don't want you to start moving me up yet. I'm still ready to go. What, what I'm saying to you is that we got to put love back into the equation. If we could get, get love, what's that song, that old song? Um, love. <clears throat> It's a lot of them. <laughs> Insert your own love song right there. <laughs> that voice thing made me very insecure in that moment. I, I was going to sing some. I had songs, but that really took me back. Uh, wow. <laughs> Edit. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> Leave it in. But, but look at verse 13. Chapter 13, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13. It said, three things will last forever. Forever, ever? Ever, ever. Thank you. Andre 3000 for not sinking. Um, watch these three things. It says faith, hope, and what? Love. And then there's a distinction. Like, 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 like I want you to know that these three things are going to last forever. This crazy faith thing is going to be here when all of us are gone. Faith, and then there's going to be hope because our hope is in Jesus Christ. But then he says love, and then he makes a distinction. And the greatest of these three is what? Love. So, so for me not to have Fugazi faith, I, I got to have corresponding actions and work with my faith. Because faith without works is? Okay. But how does faith work? Faith works by love. Well, I got one more question, Pastor Mike. How does love work? <laughs> let, me, let me give you my last point. Love always gives so, so so what ends up happening is you can tell if your faith has the opportunity to, to go to another place if there's some type of sacrifice attached to it a sacrifice of your time a sacrifice of your effort of your talents of your gifts of your resources there has to be a giving a part of your faith because if it's not it's not authentic. It's fugazi. Can I prove it to you? When God wanted to prove his love to all of us, look what he did. He said in John 3, 16, for God so what? Love. And who did he love? The world, not Christians. Not faith-filled people. Not the church. The people you hate, God loves. I'm going to say it again for you because you, you're praying against them and God's rooting for them. You're hoping that they fail and God's hoping they succeed. The people you hate are the exact same people that God loves. And maybe he sent you there to be a physical representation 
of his love to them. And the only way you truly have faith is if you step outside of your self and give to them. Y'all see how quiet it is? <laughs> For God so loved the world that he did what? Gave. And he didn't give $100. He didn't give a country. He didn't give the Pacific Ocean. I mean, if you're a baller and you could give away the Pacific Ocean, just think about that. For these people who maybe will accept me and maybe won't, I'll give the Pacific. Throw in the Indian Ocean too. That would have been an extravagant gift. But he said, no, I love them so much that I'm going to give... I'm going to give them the thing that's valuable to me. I'm going to give them not one of my many sons. I'm going to give them my only. A true test of your faith is when you will be willing to give your only. That's how he tested Abraham. He waited 25 years for Isaac, got Isaac, and then he asked him to sacrifice his only. That's why when, when people say, like, God told me to give my car away, but it's my only car, so that had to be the devil. <laughs> it's in God's characteristics. Well, I only got one off day. I sure ain't volunteering at the church on that day. It's in God's characteristics to ask for your only. I'm going to let that sit for a second. Well, this is the money that I've been saving for this vacation. It's the only one I'm going to take all year. It's in God's characteristics. Again, look how quiet it is. I'm only coming to this place because I don't want you to live in a place of feeling like your faith is optimistic, but you never walk in crazy faith. And if you're ever going to get into crazy faith in your family, in your business, in your marriage... You're going to have to put corresponding action with it. And that action only can work by love. And love works by giving. Help me. Help me finish this. Oh, I love it. My prayer for you is that you would move from an optimistic faith to an action faith. A faith that when God says something to you, you would obey him and you would listen. That means you'll give up your time, your resources, your attention. Because fugazi faith won't do any of that. Fugazi faith won't work, won't love, and won't give. I'm going to say it again. Fake faith won't work, won't love, and won't give. And that's some of the relationship advice that you needed today. Because your relationship in this room, some of your marriages are going through, but one of y'all won't go to marriage counseling because you're not willing to work. And you don't want to put in what it's going to take and love that person through what they're going through. And, and so you won't give the time it takes. I'm all in your business. People is reshifting re right now. All I'm telling you is if you don't work, you don't love, you don't give, you actually will have a fake version of whatever the real thing is. The relationship you think you have with your kids is probably fake. And you won't find out until they're 40 and on Maury Povich talking about how jacked up their childhood was because in your mind, you think working a job is working on your relationship with them. And it's too tough. I feel like I have to do a parenting something. I'm going to have to do that at some point. But what's happening is I'm counseling you crazy. And it's because people have the wrong view of work, love, and give. But God doesn't want anything you do to be counterfeit. He wants the real thing. So, so why is this an important concept? I need y'all just to stay focused for one more second. Why is this an important concept? Because at this church, we will not talk about faith and not live it. Hear what I'm saying to you. And we put it to the test every year. At the, the end of the year, many of you are new here, and so I just want to give you an opportunity to join your faith with what we do. Every year, a pillar of our church is at the end of every year, we give a sacrificial offering together as a family for the expansion and the building of this house so that people can be transformed in Christ. And, and, and what happens is, is that we ask God, what should we give? 
There's no number. There's no magic water. There's no three sprays and then God's going to do a miracle. All that is gimmick. All we know is the Bible tells us to honor the Lord with our wealth. It, it tells us, I want you to see it right now in, in, in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. It says, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats will, everybody say, overflow. That, that's what we're believing for, that everything that we touch will overflow, but it comes with honoring God and putting our faith to the test. December 15th. We're going to come and do our end of the year offering. And there's nothing else we could call this thing except the crazy faith offering. And literally, families. It's probably one of the most holy things that we do. Because some of y'all thinking like, oh my God, he did all this to take money. He about to take our offering. Y'all run, run, run. We're not taking anything from you. Today, I, I, I wanted to come and tell you this eight weeks in advance. So you don't feel no pressure. You don't have to come in here and like, everybody, stop, close the doors. Uh, are we hostage now? <laughs> We're not doing none of that. All I want you to do is ask God. Ask God, what am I supposed to do to help build this vision? Because this faith has to have action. And actions are our works. And, and that works by love. And love always gives. So what are you saying, Pastor Mike? This is just an opportunity. You're going to have opportunities this week. You're going to have opportunities next week. But on December 15th, we're going to come together as a family. And some of you are going to give the largest gift you've ever given in your life to a church. Because you know what we do here is not for what we do here. It's for transformation in Christ. And, and, and let, me, let, me, let me tell you, because I know there's been a lot of abuse in the area of finance, especially when it comes to church. As long as you've been here, we've never taken a second offering. We've never fleeced anybody. We've never done anything because we don't believe in that. But we do believe in what the word of God says. And look what the word of God says in, in 1 Corinthians. I want you to see this so clearly. It tells us that we are not supposed to give. 2 Corinthians 9, 7. It says each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give. Like, like giving is all about the heart. The church just want my money. No, the church don't want your money. God wants your heart and he uses your finances as a way to get to your heart because where a man's treasure is, there his heart will be also. And this is just for some of you. This is going to be your time. You ain't never done nothing. No. That's a scam. Da, 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 da. And all God's going to say is give that little number I told you. And what that little number you, he told you is going to break you out of the chains that have been keeping you bound mentally, emotionally, financially, physically, because it's going to show you have, everybody shout at me, faith. faith. And so we're going to come. And, and, and we're going to give for the future expansion of what God's going to do. Do y'all know we're standing in a miracle right now? Yes. But before that miracle happened, on 1519 West Pine, the first year I became a pastor, there was a smaller group of people who who heard me stand up with, with puberty still in my throat. I still got it, I guess. And I said, I believe God has told us to raise $80,000 for new cameras. And people left the church over it. Left. How are you going to come up in here asking for 80000 He is irresponsible. Well, if you've ever heard a message through YouTube, if you've ever heard anything online outside, if you've ever seen anything on Instagram, it, it was because a small group of people had crazy faith to step beyond their border and say, I don't even know, but I'm 51% sure Pastor Mike heard from God. So we're going to do it. And now this ministry has touched tens of millions of people. When we get to heaven, everybody that gave in that offering, there are going to be people who say thank you because my life wouldn't have been turned around if you wouldn't have given. They're going to say thank you because I was transformed by the 120,000 you gave. And now we get that opportunity again because last year in our tabernacle offering, at the same time of year, this church gave over $1.2 million in one offering. Oh, y'all can give God glory. 
I remember the first time we did it, it was $8,000. And we shouted and we praised and we gave it away to other churches. We didn't use one of those dollars for us. God says, I want you to be a conduit. And we gave that $8,000. And because of the faithfulness of what God's doing, guess what we got to give away this year? Put it up on the screen. We got to give to sex trafficking this year. We got to give to the Dream Center this year. We built new churches with art. We gave to Action Chapel. We ended sex slavery for somebody in a third world country. We helped prisoners reintegrate back in. Oh, y'all don't hear me. We helped families and single mothers. From $8,000 to this year, we gave over $300,000 away. If you don't rejoice over that, you ain't got the heart of generosity. I'm sorry. And the craziest thing, sit down. I need y'all for five minutes. The craziest thing that happened is that when this hurricane came, I didn't have to stand up here and ask for a, an offering to help the people in the Bahamas. Because of your consistency and faithfulness, we were able to go to the department and write a check for $40,000 to give a mother. Y'all don't hear me. If you were in that and you lost everything and no stores are around for formula for your baby, we were able to do that. What would happen if not everybody around the world, but if everybody that's in this room right now, that's everybody watching in Transformation Nation and everybody physically in this room, what if everybody heard from God and just obeyed him and made our faith complete? That it wouldn't be fugazi, that it wouldn't just be talk, that it wouldn't be we just share the, the video on Instagram. We got the keys, 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 keys. Okay, we got to pay for the lights, 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 lights. <laughs> We got to help people, 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 people. Like, you know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? And people would rather celebrate than participate. But not Transformation Church. Not this group of people that we've been in a series called Crazy Faith for half a year. We are going to be the ones who do like the people who had to re rebuild the temple in Haggai. Haggai chapter 1, verse 5. It says, a call to build the house of the Lord. Now, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Who said it? The Lord. Okay. He said, give careful thought to your ways. Like, just don't be doing anything. I'm moving right now. You have planted much, but harvested little. You eat, but you never have enough. You drink, but never are full. You put on clothes, but you aren't warm. You earn wages at that job but only to put them in your purse with holes in it. Isn't that what a life that has faith and no action seem like? I'm doing a lot of work. I'm doing a lot of work, but for a little results. God says, trust me with it. In verse 7, it says, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Who said it? The Lord. He says, give careful thought again to what, what you're doing in your ways. And then he gives instruction, and I believe for everybody who has doubt or frustration or has maybe a hurt when it comes to finances in church, this is your instruction right now. It says, go up into the mountains, bring down the timber, and build my house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. Who said it? So these are the steps that I want you to do over the next eight weeks. I promise you I would never abuse you in any way as a pastor or a leader. The Bible says that there are so many consequences for any leader. Y'all, I'm, I'm scared to stand up here every Sunday. Not, not because I don't think I can do it. It's because if I lead one person astray, like if what I say is sending you down the wrong path, the, the Holy Spirit don't come after you, he come after me. And so I've been so careful. You can ask the team. We didn't prayed over this a hundred times just because I want to make sure this is coming out with the heart of God, which is love. Remember, God does not, um, um, God doesn't give love. He is love. And so this is what we're going to do. Number one, we're going to go to the mountain. What do you mean, Pastor Mike? Moses would always go up into the mountain to get in the presence of God. 
And all I'm asking you to do is over this next eight weeks, I want you to get in the presence of God. I want you to pray. Father God, you heard Pastor Mike up there talking. That was great. What do you want me to give? What do you want me to do? Because I can't do anything you don't lead me to do. And I don't care if you have a bunch of money. Don't just be given just to say that I did it. I would rather you fine tune your voice to hear the Holy Spirit than just give what you can out of your, out of your abundance. I want your faith to grow. So no matter if you have a million dollars in the bank or two cents in the bank, because there was a woman in the Bible who gave a more extravagant gift than anybody. She had two mites. And the Holy Spirit, through Jesus, said, look what she's giving. She just gave more than all these people that was making it rain in the temple. He said, because they gave out of their abundance. But she gave out of her faith. And that's what I'm asking you to do. So pray, go to the mountain. And then it says, get the timber. And what is the timber? It's the resources that are needed to build the temple. The resources we need are finances. I'm telling y'all right now, we moved in this place with 48 hours notice and, and this stage and these lights and all this stuff is rented. And I hate renting stuff because that money just going away that we could be giving to somebody to transform their situation. So I told the team, I have faith that we about to buy everything. We about to buy the cameras. We about to buy the sound system. I just need five people to agree with me. We gonna buy the screens. We gonna buy, we buy it at all. We gonna take all of it. So that we could be better stewards of over what God's given us. So we need resources. Everybody say resources. So after you pray, I just want you to bring whatever resources that God tells you to bring to do one thing. He said, build my house. And what are we gonna do? We're gonna give generously. On December 15th, we're gonna come in this place and we're gonna have faith. And right now there are people that have cards. There are crazy faith cards. I want y'all to start handing those out right now. And, and, and give me one right here, sweetheart. Give me one, thank you so much. Like, this is, this is what it looks like. And I'm asking everybody to take one of these. And on the back of it, it says, I have crazy faith that. We don't ever give and not assign our faith to the, everybody say who? Yeah, our who is Jesus. And, and some of you are going to be believing that God does a turnaround in your family. You're going to be believing that God changes your financial situation. You're going to be believing that that wayward son, cousin, friend would actually come to Christ. Some of you are going to be believing that your business turns around and actually has a successful year. I don't care what you're going to believe in. Believe in. I don't care how much you're giving. We're going to pray over all of this stuff. But I want you... To bring this back on December 15th. And everybody from around this place, we're going to come and bring our offering. It's going to be a special holy moment in our service. In the season where Christmas is there and everybody's thinking about what they're getting, getting, getting. We're going to be giving, giving, giving. And what a perfect picture for us to recenter our heart on what really matters. is eternity. Your kids is going to play with that for the week they out of school. And then it's going to be over. But what if we could do God's work together and build this house? Me and my family are going to be believing for some significant things. And we're going to give towards building this house. I will never stand up a day in this pulpit and ever ask you to do something that I'm not doing. Last year, my daughter Bella, she gave with me and my family. And at five years old, she said, Daddy, what are we doing? Because the envelope was fat. I wanted to see every dollar. I wanted to feel that sacrifice. I, I, didn't, I didn't just send it. I went to the bank and I got it out. Because I, I needed to know. Like, and you don't got to do that. You can wire, you can do whatever you want. But for me, I needed to see it. She said, Daddy, why are you, why are you giving all this money? I said, because there used to be a time where Daddy was lost, broken, hurting, and confused. And God gave everything for me. And so as a family, whatever God asks us to give, we gladly give it back to him. I thought she was going to say something deep. She said, okay. <laughs> and what would happen if our response to whatever God would say to us would be that simple? Give the 10,000. Okay. Give the 200. Okay. 
I've seen high school students and middle school students come and participate in this. And God's given them full ride scholarships and done so many different things. And it wasn't a bunch of money. It was a five. God's not looking for amounts. He's looking for obedience. December 15th. Transformation Church is going to the next level because we're giving in this crazy faith offering. And Transformation Nation, you are as just as much as part of what is going on here as everybody in this room. And I want you to know that every dollar you see send in, in to this place is going to help transform lives all over the world. This is for you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to make sure the team puts this exact thing online, screenshot on YouTube or on our app so that you can take it. And listen, everybody, put it up on your refrigerator. Put it in your car. Make it your cell phone screensaver. For the next eight weeks, we're believing in faith. And on December 15th, we're going to come and give. Because we won't have fake faith. Faith without works is what? But faith works by love. And love always gives. Can I pray for you right now? Father, I thank you for every person under the sound of my voice. I declare that what you're doing in our life is preparing us for every victory that's coming, Father God. I declare, Father God, that as we join in faith and make this a holy moment, to just go to the mountain and ask you, what do you want us to give? And we bring those resources into this house to build your house, to see people transformed in Christ. Father, I'm asking you that you do a work in us right now. And right now, Father, before we leave this place, we want to declare the victory. God, we want to say that we don't know how it's going to happen, Father, but we have crazy faith to believe. I'm even speaking it out right now. Father God, the $4.5 million that we still need to be debt free in this building, I'm declaring we will be debt free by 2020. I need somebody to believe me with it. Father God, we're going to have crazy faith. And I thank you that you don't do anything for this house that you're not trying to do in everybody's individual house. I trust you and I believe you and we will see a victory in Jesus name somebody say in Jesus name hey let me show you one thing real quick I pulled out this sheet my faith sheet my crazy faith sheet and, and it's crazy that I need you to see this and I need us to record this because I'm just stepping out of crazy faith I didn't say crazy stuff before so I'm gonna just keep stepping out and, and we'll just see what happens but it says the Spirit Bank Event Center will be Transformation Church we will have state-of-the-art facilities I want you to pay attention to line two and three. It says the kid zone will be a place that draws students from around the world. I'm believing that as we give, we are going to outfit transformation kids, this entire area over here, to be able to be world class for kids to come and learn about Jesus Christ and be transformed. Can I get somebody to believe with me? And then check this out. Don't miss this moment. It says somebody, everybody say somebody, is going to underwrite the whole thing. Now watch. When I first read that, I read that with a very narrow mind that Warren Buffett was in the church and he was just going to take care of it. And if you hear Brother Buffett, <laughs> hit your boy. But the Holy Spirit, he said, Michael, it'd be easy for me to allow one person to come in and take care of this. But he said, I said, some body. What would happen if this body, Transformation Nation and the people in here, if we had the crazy faith to believe that God could take our little bit individually and put it together to see a miracle happen. We got our first check from somebody the other week and my finance people came to me and said, Pastor Mike, somebody done wrote us a check. I said, what do you mean somebody? He said, somebody done wrote us a check for what we believe in God for. And a member of this church ah, wrote a one-time check of 233000 I didn't say $200. I said $233,000. Now watch what does that do God said I'm not waiting till December 15th to start this thing he said I'm placing it on people's heart to obey me everybody say now 
And what does that do? That gives us the ability to buy three of these lights in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Pastor Mike, why are you being this forward and transparent with us? Because I've seen too many people do stuff behind the scenes. And I just want to put it all out there. We're believing God in crazy faith, standing all over this building. If you can, I know some of y'all came in late because of the traffic. But if you could just sing this one time, just say, I'm going to see a victory. Believe it. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Come on, lift your hands, say. I'm going to see a victory. Believe it. I'm going to see a victory. Come on, for the battle. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. If everybody could stop where you're at right now, stop, 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 stop. Y'all hear me in the back, stop. Stop, stop, stop. Unless you got an emergency. If you're in this room and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and you want to make that decision for Jesus right now, on the count of three, I'm about to pray for you. If that's you and you're tired of living your own life, and you're tired of being in control, would you say, Pastor, that's me. I want you to include me in that prayer all over this. One, two, three. Just lift your hands. I see you. I see you. I see you. People's eternity is changing right now. We're a family at Transformation Church. For everybody, this is your day. And I believe God's changing you. We don't pray alone, so let's pray together. Everybody just say, God, thank you for sending Jesus to just for me. I believe you lived, you died, and you rose again just for me. Today, I give you my life, and I'm going to see a victory. Change me. Renew me transform me I'm yours in Jesus name transformation church let's celebrate with every person that just made that decision we believe in you we thank God for you and this is just the beginning as you leave this week you have an opportunity to let your faith be fugazi or you can make your actions and your faith complete Today's going to be the best day of your life. This week is going to be the best day of week of your life. And we believe that God has victory in your future. If you believe it, will you give God a shout of praise? Go from this place and leave a transformed life. We love you. Come on.